Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing a very powerful mini computer created by Minus Forum. And inside this box is the HX90 which features an 8 core 16 thread Ryzen 5900HX. That's quite a CPU for such a small computer. Anyway, let's open up the box and see how it is. Full disclosure, I was given this unit free of charge under the condition that I would post a review video. You're seeing this at the same time as Minus Forum and they are given no copy approval. As far as I'm aware, this is the final retail packaging. The box it was shipped in seems to have been enough for the unit to arrive safely. There's one little typo which I thought was funny. This machine apparently features Zen 3 Crow architecture. Inside the box, we've got the all important instruction booklet, the sizable mini computer held in place by foam, a power lead, the 120 watt laptop style power brick, a small stand, HDMI cable, vase mount and screws. There are also these little SATA drive adapters if you wish to add more drives. Sliding off the protective foam, we get our first look at the HX90. This is the air intake side decorated with what look to be small Mercedes logos. And the front port selection is also quite generous. All of the USB ports are Gen 1 3.05 gigabits, sadly not Thunderbolt. And at the rear we've got four more USB 3.0 ports, Ethernet and four display outputs capable of 4K at 60Hz simultaneously. Today's video was made possible thanks to AGM's new rugged smartphone, the AGM H3, featuring Android 11, a large battery and IP69K certified ruggedness. To find out more, feel free to click the link in the description below. On first impressions, the build quality is very, very solid, and it has a good weight to it. And I must say, it is much bigger than the DMAF5 I reviewed last year. In saying that, it should also be a whole lot more powerful, so let's see just how powerful it is. While it can be used on the included stand, it becomes an even more discreet computer with the use of the vase mount. Most televisions and computer monitors have the necessary mounting screw holes on the back. All you've got to do is attach the bracket and necessary screws. Now the HX90 is hidden away behind the display. Thankfully this doesn't compromise the airflow which gets directed out of the side air vents you can see here. If you put some time into cable management you can get the whole setup looking pretty neat. This review unit came pre-installed with a version of Windows 10 Pro and I'm pretty certain it is also capable of running Windows 11 if you wanted. Jumping straight into some popular performance benchmarks, the Ryzen 5900HX gets a multi-core score of 12087 and a single core of 1504 in Cinebench R23, both very good scores. In a different CPU benchmark, Cinebench R20, I was able to get an excellent score of 5027, which compared to the 3550H CPU in the Minus form I reviewed last year, is a massive jump in performance. Thermal performance is also really good. The single fan and adequate airflow allow the CPU to never exceed 90 degrees Celsius and that's with all the cores running at 100% load at about 3.8 GHz. It never exceeded 90 degrees Celsius during my prolonged stress test. This was done by running Cinebench R20 back to back 7 times. The scores were nearly identical through all the runs. In the BIOS you can set the processor to 54 watt mode. The auto setting must have already been doing this though as the stress test came back with nearly identical results. Before we get into some gaming tests, let's see what's actually inside this mini computer. To swap out the NVMe SSD or add up to two additional 2.5 inch SATA drives, all you've got to do is take out the four Torx T16 screws on the back and remove the cover. The NVMe solid state drive in this review unit is a Kingston 256GB model with respectable sequential read and write speeds. Adding further SATA storage was very easy. I chose to put in this 480GB BX200 drive for some games. There are also two RAM slots, but they are a little harder to get to. Starting from the outside, just as before, you remove the Torx T15 screws, then all of the drives and removable Wi-Fi 6 card. And after removing the rest of the visible screws, the board pops right out, leaving us with nothing but the empty shell. The motherboard is quite simple and well designed. The RAM, CPU cooler and clock battery are all removable. The RAM in here isn't great. With CL timings of 22 and by 16 data width, these single sided 8GB RAM sticks are going to make the CPU perform about 20% worse than theoretically possible with better by 8 dual sided RAM sticks. I don't have any compatible higher quality memory to back up what I'm saying, but this is common knowledge that modern AMD processors and their integrated graphics perform considerably worse with cheap RAM like this. Honestly, I've been quite impressed by the build quality and the CPU performance of the HX90. But if you are into gaming, the Vega 8 APU is alright. You're going to be running games at at most 1080p and quite often you're going to have to lower the graphical settings for it to get to run at around 60 frames per second. 
Benchmarks are one thing, but how does it perform in some of my favourite games? In Grand Theft Auto V on normal settings, it was maintaining about 60 frames per second. It did dip down to as low as 50 occasionally, but this is very playable and really impressive for integrated graphics. A game that's pretty GPU intensive is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. To get it to hit 60 frames per second at a resolution of 1080p, I had to put all the settings as low as they'd go. Visually, it still looks pretty good and it hardly dips below 55 FPS, so this is quite playable. I also tried joining my Minecraft server, which unsurprisingly ran on the HX90 with ease. Getting around 150 to 250 frames per second with the graphics set to fancy, this is a game that really has no issues on the Vega 8 APU. But how does this compare to last year's DMAF5's Vega 8 graphics? In the benchmark Unigen Heaven, the new HX90 is about 400 points clear. And in the 3D Mark Firestrike benchmark, the HX90 with its higher clocked Vega 8 APU is over 1000 points ahead. But this margin could be even greater if the HX90 was paired with higher quality RAM. That being said, if you really need some good CPU performance, this is a decent option. And the representative from Minus Forum said that the retail units will be shipping with liquid metal instead of the conventional thermal paste in this review unit, so there might be some marginal performance gains over the tests I've shown. As I said previously, if you want to maximize performance, you're going to want to get the bare bones kit and install your own RAM. The Bi-16 single-sided RAM sticks that are in here are not really all that great. This is a very capable system, starting at 649s for the bare bones kit without RAM and a storage drive. You get a heap of performance for the money. The 5900HX is a fantastic processor, even better when paired with decent RAM. And after testing this out, I can highly recommend it if CPU power is a priority to you. So there we have it, the Minus Form HX90. If you need really strong CPU performance, this thing has it in spades. And if you want to do a bit of light gaming, it can do that too, but just remember that the APU that's in here is not going to perform as well as a dedicated desktop card. And also the lack of Thunderbolt means you probably can't run an external GPU. Anyway, thanks to Minus Forum for sending that over, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll catch you in the next one.